Yo, what is going on guys? Enzim here and today I have another video for you guys. So because you guys showed so much support on the last video I made about the pressure guide, that kind of showed me that you guys really want to see more content focusing on teaching people things they might not know about the game. So we're going to keep on doing that. So in today's video, I have some pretty interesting things to show y'all about how to deal with Lab Code 21. And even though she is a extremely broken character and is still probably top one, with all these things in mind, I can guarantee you some of this stuff will be very helpful. So let's look into it. Alright, so like I just mentioned, Labco is a pretty ridiculous character. And even though, like I said, these things are going to be pretty cool and strong against her, take it with a grain of salt because she is still the best in the game. So the first thing we're going to talk about is actually how bad she is at the post on block 6M situation. For the people who don't know, 6M is 0 on block, neutral, and because it's 0 on block, if both players press their jab, and this is if both players are using a character that is a 6 frame character, they will clash, right? So normally, if you start clashing with her, her clash situation is one of the strongest in the games so due to her having a 8 frame medium button, and also having a frame 4 barrier, but... Because her 5L hits low, you can actually jump after it. And as you can see, it will miss. Normally, this doesn't really happen. Most characters jab will catch you in the air if they are a 6 framer. So because you can jump, and because her jab pushes her a little bit forward, as you can see, you can actually mix her up for trying to clash at you. So, like this. And this is really, really good because almost no one will be ready to block this one. I use this all the time. And this can really scare people who are using Labco into not wanting to interact with your Clash games because that is a very, very fast cross up, right? And once they are conditioned to not want to Clash with you, you can start kind of taking advantage because they'll try to do things like jump or maybe spin or maybe even try to anti or you to deal with the cross up, but you don't have to do that. You can just simply keep pressing buttons, right? This one is really strong because, again, 6M is very common in the game, and if you show the opponent that you can actually abuse the situation that it's in your favor, so much so to the point where you can actually get free hits, it can really dissuade them from wanting to interact with you, so you can kind of get away with murder and your pressure, so to speak, right? So the next thing I'm going to show off, and this is actually probably going to be the one almost no one knows about, is she actually cannot level 3 you as a reversal. The two most common situations where this will come into play is usually uh, like plus on block situations, like post vanish, and on knockdown. But because both of her level 3s actually have a little bit of weird properties, you can actually OS both of them to the point where if she uses either of them, they will both not work. So let's talk about the first level 3, the teleporting side switch one. This level 3 tracks to you everywhere, but it is actually a slow level 3, meaning you can delay your vanish. A lot of people make the mistake of immediately vanishing, and as you can see, she will track to your vanish and you will be punished. But if you slightly delay your vanish after you've seen her level 3, it will actually miss. And this is really good, because as you can see, I am plus, so I can take my turn. That one is a bit more well known. But this one almost no one knows. So her other level 3, and which is what higher level players opt to use in these situations because they understand that it can be delayed vanish, actually can be low profiled because it hits too high. So as you can see, I just low profiled her level 3 with a 2L. And with that in mind, because she is so negative when she misses this level 3, you can actually get a run up medium starter for a majority of characters. So with these two in mind, you can actually OS both of the level 3s because in these situations all you have to do is meet her with a low profiling move and if she chooses the one that can be low profiled, you will low profile it like I just showed and if she chooses the other one, you can just delay vanish. So realistically, she actually just can't use a level 3. Here's another example of a character abusing this, SSJ Goku. As you can see, his 2L actually doesn't get him low enough to avoid it, but his 2M does. And just like Team Gohan, he can get a run-up medium starter. If you're fast enough. Over here. Over here. 
The last example of a character I will show you that can do this is Kefla, just like Team Gohan. She can actually use her 2M to get under it and get a full combo punish. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys is actually something about her offense that can be exploited. The previous things I just showed you is actually exploiting how weak her defense can be at times, but this one is actually targeting her offense. So. It is pretty well known that Labco players will do 6H and 2-3H, this block string. And the reason they do this block string is because this gives her the highest reward on hit. Because she could do 6H into 3H into EX spin and she can get a full combo punish off the mix-up option. But, there is a very huge gap between 6H and 3H that you can actually mash out of. And while she can check this, by doing 6H into 5H. As you can see my mash just got counter hit. She can also check this with 6H into Key Blast. As you can see my mash got counter hit again. But, if you notice the opposing Labco player is doing 6H into 3H a lot to get the good confirm, you can mash out of it maybe once or twice to show them that you understand how that works and to force them to stop it. And that alone can already win you a match. So again, here is another thing about her offense that can be exploited. I see Labco players get away with this a ton and it is actually fake. It is when she knocks you down in the corner and when she does stomp, I notice a lot of players, high level, mid level, low, low level alike, actually will do an IEDH and they'll do two of them in case you delay tech. And while if you don't know, you can actually deal with this consistently, this can be really, really broken. But let me show you guys how to deal with it. As you can see, you can actually run under her if she does this setup and get a pretty much a, a punish. They can block in this situation, but because you run under so fast, if they can't switch their guard fast enough, uh, they will get hit. And especially because a lot of players won't expect this, usually no one switches their guard fast enough. This is really good because, again, you can take away one of her offensive sequences, and usually this always happens in the corner, right? So you go from you being in corner pressure by lab coat, which basically means they're going to get hit for free because of how strong her offense is and her mix-ups are, to you hitting her in the corner. So that can be a pretty big difference in the match flow, right? The last thing I'm going to show you guys, and even though this kind of goes without saying, I see a lot of people mess this up, it is actually being ready to punish her debuff. So I know her debuff is 21 frames I believe, and I know that is extremely fast, and due to her other options this is almost unreactable, almost. It is reactable, but it's one of the hardest things to react to in the game. But even if you jump it, I see majority of players actually won't punish it either, kind of showing the lab code they can get away with murder, right? So there is actually consistent ways to punish this if you're ready. So I see a lot of people make the mistake of trying to do jump and then super dash which typically works for most command grabs, but because she recovers so fast from her debuff, and because she has a frame 1 anti-air, most Labco players, if they see the debuff will miss, will actually mash EX spin, the anti-air one, because a lot of people autopilot into super dash, which is again the traditional way to punish command grabs, and you get cooked for it, right? It'll look like that. Even if you super dash even faster, because her anti-air is frame 1, you're probably going to get cooked, right? So again, this is character specific, different characters have different ways of answering it, but there is a almost universal way, most characters JS's can punish this, but again, I advise you guys to lab your character specifics. If you have any questions on any characters that you play that you would want to know how they can punish it, leave it in the comments, I will be more than happy to help you out. But for an example, let's take SJ Goku here, his JS is very good at punishing this. As you can see, it was a true punish. Another character like Teen Gohan actually gets even more damage off his punish because he can convert into EX legs, which does a buttload of damage, right? So it would look something like this. And his combo is very good for this. So the last example of a character I'm going to show you who can punish this in a different way is Vegito. 
and while he can do jump back JS like I just showed you with previous characters, he actually has another way he can punish this, which a lot of characters can actually punish this too, so I wanted to kind of show you guys, which is jump J2H. The player who actually showed me this was Yasha. Um, I'm not too sure who found it first. I do know that Yasha and Goichi were the first players I saw using it, so credits to them. And as you can see, if you jump and just instantly press J2H because of how fast it'll come out and the angle, it's a pretty consistent punish. So again, while I do understand she is top 1 and one of the most busted characters this game has ever seen, characters are not without their weaknesses, even her. So again, if you guys like these type of videos, please once again like, comment, and subscribe letting me know that you guys enjoy this again i really do appreciate the support and love that you guys gave me in the previous video and like i said in the pre that one it really shows me what you guys want to see so i can keep pumping out these videos and like always i'll see you guys in the next video